Hey, it's Lynn Brown. Welcome to the Gritty Women Global Podcast. I'm a results coach. After experiencing really sucky results for the first half of my life, one day I just drew a line in the sand and I said enough was enough and I bet on me. Now, when I say I spent the first half of my life caught in the comparison trap, I am not kidding you. And then if that wasn't bad enough, in my spare time, I was a world-class people pleaser. And trust me, my gritty sisters, it'll get you nowhere fast. So now I'm, I'm a recovered people pleaser. Well, let me just say, recovering people pleaser. For the most part, I am. Every now and then, the little voice will sneak in to try to hook me. But at least I'm aware. So I can fix what I'm aware of. I love, I love the quote by Henry David Thoreau, that, you know, when one steps confidently in the direction of their dream, they will meet with success unexpected in uncommon hours. And that's what I'm experiencing now in my life for the, for the first time. Well, I say for the first time, but over the past, over the past seven years, I have, I have been creating this new normal. We keep hearing about the new normal. I, I've been creating this new pattern of results. So today I want to ask you a question. It's a pretty good question. And I, and I know my mentor asked me this um, on Sunday. But what do you want the rest of your life to look like? Seriously, you. Why owe you? Not what you think other people think it should look like. Not what you think your parents want or wanted your life to look like. Not what you think is the most logical or reasonable or practical picture of what your life should look like. And honestly, not what your friends think your life should look like. It gets hard sometimes to really determine what you truly desire, your purpose, your call. So, so today, that's just kind of what we're going to think into. What do you want the rest of your life to look like? And in order really to truly answer that, it's probably going to take more than just this 15-minute podcast. But what, what we're going to share and talk about today, I, I think it will maybe shake up your thoughts a little bit. What I'm discovering, though, is that there's a difference between being quiet and being still. They're two different things. And I've just discovered this. This is crazy sounded, but I have been for for going on six years now, I have been doing a early morning, like I get up at five o'clock, do my quiet time, my gratitude, all of that. I have this whole list of things I go through. And now I am not one of these people that have to hit the snooze button on on life every morning. And I'm not being ugly or judgmental or anything, but if you hit the snooze button, you might want to think about that a little bit. You might want to just create a new way to create a new habit in that area because it's really not giving you effective sleep. I know you, th- I know you think you're getting a little bit more sleep and you're going to feel refreshed, but really you're not because you might drift off, but you don't really fall into deep sleep. So it's kind of like crappy sleep between every time, every nine minutes or seven minutes that the snooze goes off. So you're really waking up kind of a little bit more agitated and irritated. So it's really not quality sleep. So you would do better to sail out of the bed. So every day I sail out of the bed, bright eyed, ready to roll. It's like game on. I mean, I'm ready for anything. When our boys were little, I would go work out, you know, before the sun came up with my friend. And, and she would always laugh because I would I would get to the lake for us to work out and I'd have sheet marks on my face. And she was like, you just got out of the bed, didn't you? I'm like, yeah, I did. But I was ready to go. It's just how I'm wired. I'm just ready. I'm always ready. But just recently, I was discovering you know, just kind of really thinking into this quiet time. And, and I realized that I have such a program for the, for the mornings that sometimes it's really not quiet. I might be still, I might be sitting in my chair, you know, with my coffee and my, you know, all the, my little things around me. But 
my mind might not be quiet. I'm constantly, you know, in search of looking for, listening to, replying to, reading, checking out the YouTube, checking out this podcast, ordering this book, trying to finish this book. Just constant, constant information. And not long ago, I realized I had kind of hit this information fatigue. I don't know if any of you know what I'm talking about, but it's just like, I felt like I couldn't keep up. It was just coming in too fast. I mean, every day I was looking out and Amazon was bringing me a new book I had ordered. Some of the books I didn't even know. Every day it was like Christmas. I opened the box to see what I had ordered. I mean, it was just like this incessant addiction to information. So I've been thinking into this, listen more. What about you? Do you truly have some quiet time in your life? And maybe you're great at being quiet. And if you are great at being quiet, please message me. Let's talk. Send me some of your ideas and thoughts. Because it is a new, it's a new skill. I am learning how to create quiet space in my life. And when I say learning how, I'm talking about going outside, you know, for 15 minutes to sit in the sun to get the vitamin D without the phone. I know. It's, I know. It doesn't sound good. I mean, I'm a coach and trainer, so I work with people and help people create new habits. But I'm just being honest with you that I've realized that this is a pattern that, that I have in my life. I think it's the missing piece, and perhaps we're all experiencing this. So I hope, I hope this makes you kind of think and do your daily routines and, and what you're doing with your time. There, there's a fine line here between just the, the, the struggle of the fear of missing out thing mode and making sure, you know, you're getting everything. You're on every book launch. You're consuming more and more. You're whatever it is. And trust me, investing in your personal growth is as important as getting your yearly checkup and brushing your teeth and flossing your teeth and drinking water and eating healthy and exercising and all that stuff. Because it's like I've said before, you can you can do all that. You can eat all the kale you want. But if you're headed sideways between your two ears, all that other stuff's not going to help. You can be as healthy as a horse. But if, if your mindset is wrong and broken, you're not going to get the results you want. Trust me, I did that for the first half of my life. So I got to really look at the results I'm getting and look at how I can improve the results. But first you have to have a result to to be able to improve one. But I really want to laser in and be intentionally focused on the, on the call and purpose of my life. I mean, my goal truly is, and it sounds so cheesy and Pinteresty and, like a quote on a wall, but my, my goal in life is to shine bright. I mean, that is truly my goal. It's bottom line, end of sentence. And the, the truth is that there's a place just for me, just for Lynn Brown, just for me to do that. A place that, that I truly can be the best and shine the brightest for my purpose and my call. And, it, and when I do that, then others will see that through me. Not just see me through me, but they will see my creator through me. It's it's a it's a unique calling that each of us have. You have it too. It's no accident that you're listening to this podcast. This isn't just oh you just were clicking through and all of a sudden you you're here in this platform because you want more. You want to discover more. You want to find out how to have more peace in your life or more calm or more whatever. I don't know what your thing is, what you need more of in your life, but you are looking for it. And that's a normal thing. We are, we are created and designed to, to want to, to be the best and to serve others. I mean, that's, that's our whole purpose here on the big blue rock. And it is going to be hard. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy. It is hard. It's difficult, but that's because we're called to a higher standard. We're called to a bigger purpose. No more average for us. We're not going to settle. It's why you're here. No more numbing. 
you know? No more just getting by. When, when you decide, when, when I decide and you decide, when we decide to live a life of significance, that is when the other the others will be drawn to us, you know, drawn to, to, to Jesus in us. And that's where the transformation takes place. That's where the change takes place. That's what ignites the fire, you know, in our souls. And that, and that y'all will, that'll make you jump out of the bed in the morning. I'm just telling you, it will, because it's not like a job. It's not like a, a duty or something you dread. It's what you're here for. It's what you love. And, and the better you are at running your race, running your race, not my race, not everybody else's race. They think you should run whatever. No, your race. The better you are at running your race. And, and when you run after what really sets your soul on fire, regardless of what anybody thinks, then you will impact more people than you ever dreamed of. I mean, that's the whole purpose. It's, it's why we want to become better so that others can become better. It's not, it's not just for selfish ambition and selfish gain and to be the best in the world or whatever. It's to, it's to shine the brightest. It's to shine the brightest so that other people can also shine bright. And I, I have committed my life, the work of my life, to partner with gritty girls and gritty women who cannot fully see their potential yet. They can't see it yet. I couldn't either. Sometimes you're when you're so close to something, you can't see it. And I could not see it. I did not know what was holding me back. But when we can help each other discover our purpose and step in our God-given potential, everything changes. And there's just one more thing about your purpose. It's, it's so interesting because your calling and your purpose is not going to fit anybody else's. It's kind of like when David was trying to wear the armor, wear Saul's armor. It was way too big for him. And right now, unfortunately, I would have... Um, <laughs> I'm having a hard time fitting into some things because they're too tight, not because they're too big. But you get the point. I mean, your your purpose and your calling has a perfect fit for you. Not for me, but for you. And I think that, you know, just having this gritty mindset is it's the difference maker. Seven years ago, honestly, I, I was stuck. I was stuck in the circumstances of life. I could not see past my circumstances. Anybody been there? Maybe you're there now. I don't know. But there is a way out. Um, now, I will tell you, there are no shortcuts, really. <laughs> there are no super hacks. But the way out is through. And when, when you apply these gritty tools to your life, you will be well on your way to creating a, a better mindset, a gritty mindset. It's, it's, the, it's the game changer. It's the separator. It's what will separate you from the pack. The G in gritty is, is for a grateful heart. And no, there are no shortcuts here either. To me, it was the starting point. Five, five years ago, well, going on six years now, I was challenged to write daily gratitude. So I want to challenge you. I'm not going to make you do as much as I did. But you do. could you do five? Five things a day. Writing it. Could you just, let's just start for a week. Just do it for a week. Seven days. Could you do it for a week? The R ingredients for resilient and that it's just the art of being able to persist through difficult times. And, and y'all, we're going to fall. We're going to fall. We're going to bust it. We're going to face plant and we're going to have to grit back up. You're going to fall a million times and you got to grit back up a million and one. It's not going to be easy. Fighting for what you want in your life is not going to be easy. Fighting for your dream is not easy. The I is, is to, to live an inspired life. I mean, if you're not, going to, if you're not fired up about your life and, and you're not shining bright, it's going to be impossible for you to ever influence anybody else. I'm not being ugly, but there are a lot of people that I would not want to to trade places with and mindsets with. And there are a lot of people that walk around talking about, you know, they might even have a little Christian bumper sticker on their car. I'm not going there right now, but you know what I'm saying? There are a lot of people that are not filled with joy and they're, they're, 
their passion level is in the <laughs> in the negative. Discovering what you are called to do in this world is key. And the two T's in gritty are to think tough. And this has been the biggest game changer for me. To think tough. You gotta think tough. No more being tossed around like a wave in the ocean. No more lukewarm, wishy-washy, wimpy wishing. I like that. No more lukewarm, wishy-washy, wimpy wishing. Isn't that good? That's pretty good. But that's what I did all my life. I mean, for the first half of my life, that's what I did. You've got to run confidently in the direction of a dream. I mean, you truly do. And why is you do you? Now, and, and that's coming from a girl that, trust me, when I was in sixth grade, I wanted acne because my best friend had acne. I begged my mama to take me to a dermatologist. Y'all, who does that? But she got to sit under a sun lamp, and I thought that was so cool. She'd come to school sunburned, and I wanted to be like that. I wanted acne. Seriously? And then also, too, and I know we're running out of time, but um, the other thing was... <laughs> I voted for myself in a, in a miscongenial for miscongeniality. I wanted a trophy so bad. I wanted to be affirmed so bad that I voted for myself, and I won. But it was—I mean, I was an imposter. But at least I got my picture in the yearbook. Trust me, y'all. I should give you all hope. <laughs> But this this mindset and this being quiet and and really thinking into what you're here for is it's, it's been a, a big hurdle for me. But when I cleared it, the day I truly accepted and believed and received the value placed on my life by my creator, my life changed. So just spend some time thinking into what you want the rest of your life to look like. And also, you might want to think about, consider uh, joining us for our Green Mindset Masterclass. It's going, to be, it's going to be awesome. And more details are coming about that. But it's just a 63-day masterclass on growing a gritty mindset. It's really how Romans 12.2 like, left the print off the page in the Bible and, and really was applied to my life for the first time. So thanks for tuning in today. Share this with your friends if it if it resonated with you. And I, and I appreciate you being part of this gritty women's global movement. Thanks for listening in. Take care and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.